Daniel, this is one of the many two-wheel tractors that you have here on property. What is this one and how did you come about getting it? So this model, this particular model here is a Simplicity. It's an LB, which uh, has a reverse. It's one of the few with reverse. And it just has a replacement. I think it's a Tecumseh engine. Um, three... 0.8 horsepower. You don't really need a lot of horsepower um, on these little tractors because you're just working the top cup, top couple inches of soil. Uh, but this is just a simple finger weeder setup. The toolbar has some David Bradley gauge wheels on. The gauge wheels help with tracking as the tractor, as the two-wheel tractors going down the row, so you're not moving from side to side. Uh, injuring plants. Uh, they kind of just act like a ski or like a drag, almost like a rudder on an airplane to kind of keep you in going in the same uh, direction. And this is a simplicity model. You got it online. The engine was shot on it, so you put a comparable engine. You mentioned the simplicity has reverse, which you like. What is it about this style of tractor that you like, say, compared to a BCS style for people that are just learning about two-wheel tractors? So one of the benefits is it's very light weight, so you don't get a lot of compaction on the soil. I can go over this fairly and, and have no worries about compaction. Also, the there's a lot of clearance. So you may be thinking, okay, what does clearance have to do with this and why is a BCS different from a two-wheel tractor? Well, a BCS has a lower axle, so that means the whole tractor is sitting lower to the ground. If you're trying to straddle a row of plants that's something like this high, you need to be able to have the top of the tractor clear over that. If it's too low, it's just going to knock it over because your implements will come in on either side. So as the tractor moves forward, the plant goes underneath. The tractor and the axle clears it with your cultivation equipment on either side. That's why clearance is such a big deal. So you can go over a pretty mature plant and just have it bend over and still do in-row cultivation with finger weeders or out-of-row cultivation with some knives. So that's, those are kind of the main two, and it's also very cheap. For a lot of market gardeners out there, they're working on a 30-inch standard size bed. The wheel width on these is probably around 20 inches, so it's not going to straddle a bed. How would a market gardener start to look at adapting their production if they're using a mechanical tractor, if they have a 30 inch bed system? So I kind of am experimenting with that. Um, I'm kind of going with a hybrid system, so we're not doing everything in a 30 inch bed. We are, so my, just do it running the numbers. Anything that's three rows or less on a 30 inch bed, you can do on a 15 on center row with a two wheel tractor. So you're, you're losing a little bit of bed space, but I'm talking, you may be losing inches. So we planted all of our garlic last year on a 15 on center row. Whereas we were doing three rows of garlic on a 30 inch bed previous to that. And we'd have to do a lot a lot of hand cultivating. There is a guy out in Hudson Valley, New York. I believe his name is David Hamblin, Hamilton. And he runs a Planet Junior tractor on a bed system with three sets of finger weeders. I think he mainly does that for his spinach and greens and maybe other types of crops. Um, so he is using a bed system. So he's just riding on top of the bed versus straddling the bed. So that's another way people are using it. Now with the toolbar setup you have now, you have finger weeders on there, which we're gonna show how you use those to cultivate or remove weeds from your system. Beyond cultivation or weed management, how else can somebody use a tool tractor 
in their market garden. I've used it a lot, mainly for cultivation. I know I've seen some people uh, attach uh, carts, so you could put a cart on there. Um, so if you were hauling a lot of produce, you could fill up your cart and, and haul produce. We don't have a lot, a large distance to move. This whole property is an acre and a half, and we're doing about a third of an acre. So we mainly use hand carts, hand push carts. Um, ground prep. Yeah, yeah, ground prep. Uh, I use uh, David Bradley for mainly for my ground prep. It has a, it's a little larger, and I don't like to work use it a lot with the crops because of its. Um, I guess it's a little more bulky or harder to, to maneuver than a smaller simplicity. Um, but in the springtime, I'll go through with stirrup hose and try to knock out all the chickweed. Um, and then after a couple spring rains, after spring rain, I'll wait a couple days until it dries out a little bit and try to go through with a tine weeder or a spike harrow to, to kill a lot of those weeds in those first initial flushes. Um, yeah, the main thing is to hit the weeds before they're past the, the weed stage. I think one of the primary uh, rules of mechanical cultivation is you can't mechanically cultivate weeds if they are, if they have the same diameter stem as the crop that you're trying to, to grow. So you really have to hit those weeds way before that happens. Earlier you mentioned that you had a Planet Junior style toolbar on here and, and by Planet Junior style this is what you mean, this part of the toolbar. These are the clamps that you're referring to and these clamps allow you to position all the components on the toolbar in different places, raising or lowering components or adding other components on and this bar steel is really what's holding on to your tools and then it connects here to the tractor itself. Can you talk about, I guess first, your finger weeders, which are right here, and how you set the width of those, especially down where the fingers are? Okay, so the the key to the, the finger weeders is you want to have them as close to the tractor as possible. Forward, close this way to the tractor as Yes, possible. because that will kind of minimize any sort of inconsistency in your forward motion from the roughness of the ground to your um, ability to walk straight, I guess. Because in theory, a row is right here of crops. Yeah, in you between. you need to make sure that you are straddling the crops or the crop row is between those fingers. So that's really how accurately you can drive the wheels. Yeah, and so any sort of motion um, from the pivot point of the toolbar where it connects to the tractor back, the, the distance, that if, when that distance increases, it also increases in, in the, the side to side motion that's gonna happen. And that's why the gauge wheels are, are far back because that's inhibiting as much as possible. The farther back the gauge wheels are, the more inhibition of that side to side motion that you're gonna get. You're gonna maintain a, a better track with, with the, the two wheel tractors. What about in terms of height on this? How do you determine where you set your finger weeders against the toolbar and how you balance the gauge wheels against that? Are you setting the gauge wheels to the optimum height and then you just make the finger wheels get to ground level based on that? Or are you starting with the finger weeders and then you do the gauge wheels second? Well, I try to get as much clearance as possible initially and so I'll try to set it up as high as possible uh, there's a little bit of a pivot on on this uh, bracket here that holds the toolbar so I can raise it up and down a little bit um, but really I try to get as much clearance as possible and then in terms of setting the depth of the uh, finger weeders I kind of try to get it so that it's just below the soil surface so I'm just breaking and lifting the soil around the base of the plant you don't want to go too deep but just breaking that top 
if you have a crust, that top layer um, of soil. And these are really what we're looking for, like these thread stage, yeah, tiny weeds like this is what it's going to get. So you don't want anything really bigger than that. So the fingers are going to spin around. We'll show this. Get those weeds, and your plants stay centered. How have you found it is adjusting the gauge wheels? Like, have you had to experiment a lot getting those how you want them? Yeah, the, this isn't the best gauge wheel setup. Uh, it takes a little while to get them to actually be in position, but this is what I have, and it works. Um, it's just a little bit of, you know, running uh, running it for a few feet, seeing how it work, how it uh, is weeding, and then modifying it from there. So these cranks, you crank this, wheels go up, wheels go down. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And there's there's other models out there. Uh, these are from a David Bradley tractor. Um, that's kind of the most abundant two-wheel tractor system that I've found in this area. Uh, so that's that's what I have. I'd rather have a different kind, but this is working. So right. and it's available. Yeah, which is the one tough thing about a lot of these <laughs> two-wheel tractors is availability. That's why there's not a lot of original or matching parts on here. And if you look at all the parts in the setup, the part that's actually adding the most value to your farms is maybe Ben Hartman would say are the finger weeders and they're the most expensive piece of this whole kit, right? Yeah, so these are a modern take on the old-fashioned budding finger weeders. Um, these are from Europe. Uh, there's a, another company making them here locally in Ohio. Um, but yeah, they're essentially modern, modernized technology on being pulled by an old, by old te technology, and this is, yeah, probably the most value-adding part. Um, but you, you also need the clearance on the tractor. See, so you may be able to run some finger weeders through uh, on a BCS tractor, but only for so long until that that low clearance uh, really inhibits you from from continuing to cultivate. Right, and the pair of these is what two hundred bucks you're saying, or they're like. 200 bucks a piece. 200 bucks a piece, so 400 bucks for these, but they're the business part of the unit in terms of doing the weed management. Yeah, and then you can get different, uh, you can get brushes for these, like whiskers, for very, very small weeds. Um, I haven't gotten the, I don't, I think those are only for the uh, 13 inch, I can't remember exactly, the 13 inch, because they have different size diameter weeders. And then I think Tillmore makes a softer rubber. Um, these are a little bit harsh with this um, hardness of rubber. I'd like to, I'd like somebody to make like a softer rubber for these smaller. I think these are the nine inch. Yeah, these are the nine inch diameters. Nobody's making a softer rubber one of these. So if there's anybody who wants to make who wants to sell me a pair of softer rubber <laughs> yeah, fingers, buy I'll buy one. <laughs> This is this has been rained on, so there's a nice crusty layer, uh, and it, so it's there's no dust mulch. It's just solid crust, and that's just wicking away a lot of the moisture. And with that wicking action, bringing moisture up to the surface, it's germinating a lot of these weeds. Yeah, see, we're just kind of breaking that crust. That's about the height you want. We're just breaking that crust. Cracking that capillary action. You're in a small urban farm context, 45 foot beds. How do you find a tractor like this in that type of scale? I think it's for my scale. Um, I think I'm just on the cusp of having the, the tractor being beneficial. If I was any smaller, I don't think it would be as beneficial because I'm so diversified in my crops. If I was just doing head lettuce, uh, maybe that would be fine because you can grow head lettuce. If you're, if you're already growing th three rows of head lettuce on a 30 inch bed, you can convert that to 15 inch on center with minimal loss in production space. And since you're doing all head lettuce, then you can pretty much um, do the same type of cultivation, the finger weeders, whatever types of sweeps you want to put on there. You can, you, 
I think that would be easier. So if I kind of went away from like the dense beds of radishes and salad greens and less tomatoes and peppers, I think it would be even more advantageous because it's, um, I can, I could use the tool more. So like I'm right on that cusp of, is it worth it? Because like right now I just weeded, you know, if there was anything in here, it would have been one whole row. I would do eight inches on a 45 inch, 45 foot bed. So that's, uh, 50 ish heads of lettuce in 30 seconds. And it was really, we, we put the tractor on pretty much the slowest it would go just for the video and it would go even faster. How do you view something like this versus a wheel hoe? I mean, it's cool to have the old equipment, the nostalgia of it, but is it overkill versus just manually pushing something? Um, I think it's a million times better than a wheel hoe. Um, just because I'm out here every day and whatever work I can take away from my body and put an engine on it, it's a, it's a heck of a lot easier just guiding a two wheel tractor versus pushing your way th through the soil with a, a, uh, a wheel hoe. I mean, you could do, I guess there have been people that put finger weeders on a double wheel hoe and that might be a you know a pretty good way to go for this scale too you know one other consideration i'm looking at here if you have this in a small farm context is you need to have room at the end of your rows you can't end your beds at a fence line or a wall because while the simplicity offers reverse backing up over a 45 foot row is probably no fun so you need some clearing turning radius at the end of each row yeah even though it's just a two-wheel tractor. You still need some headlands, and you're going to need, need those anyway. Oh, Because, I mean, seeing you use it and from talking to you now, last year, and throughout the year on this, I mean, what you're trying to do is trade engine power for human power and get a lot of cultivation done either in one shot with a tine rake like we saw or very quickly with the finger weeders. Yeah, that's mainly what it's all about is not killing myself, just manually weeding all day long. I mean, that's the main draw for me is figuring out how to get this system to work as efficiently as possible. So I'm not standing with the hoe all day long and just freeing up that time. Cause you did four rows here in 30 seconds, if that. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it knocked down a good number of weeds. Um, it broke up broke up a lot of that crusting and it pulled a few out. I think they just weren't buried deep enough. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's done. And I'll probably do the same with the beets just, just to try it. I mean, in thinking about this, one of the challenges with the tractors and market gardening is you have the 30 inch bed width. It doesn't match up with your wheel width. And it also doesn't necessarily match up with You'd have to run multiple sets of finger weeders if you have multiple rows per bed. So I mean, we're in the Midwest here in Indiana. There's a lot of land. I mean, is, is a better two-wheel tractor farm plan to have use more land but have long single rows instead of trying to compress more rows into one bed? That way it's just you can go straight, open up the engine, and you're off. Yeah, if you can find a piece of land like that, that'd be awesome. Here, we have a horseshoe, and there's some obstacles like this big tree, um, which serves its purpose. I mean, I could cut it down and put a bed right through there, but it's great to put all my crops under there. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, maybe it would work, but yeah, if you had a nice square or rectangular plot of land, and you could just go down the row, and make it really easy, just like a Bob Ross painting. I mean, that would be awesome. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video, everyone, today. If you want to learn more about Daniel, be sure to check out the link below. I've done a podcast with him in the past. You can listen to that episode, link below. And if you want to see the last two-wheel tractor I did here about one year ago, you can watch that at the end of this video. But thanks for watching, everybody.